This is my IKEA Billy bookcase and it's about to get a very unusual upgrade. You have surely heard of bookshelf speakers. Well, the DIY speaker I have in mind is literally going to be a shelf module for my bookcase. IKEA, I hope you're taking notes. It's going to replace the wooden speaker that I made a few years ago. This one takes up too much space, which I now need to fit more of my books. So it's going out. Meanwhile, my literal bookshelf speaker is going to be as slim as possible and it will be able to support books and other stuff. And yes, I know that I can just go and buy a Symphonisk, but where's the fun in that? Besides, my speaker will look better and will be much cheaper. So let's do this. For this project, I'm going to need three things. An amplifier, a couple of speaker drivers and a suitable box to put them all in. You can find links to key parts in the video description and I'll be publishing all my project sketches over on my Patreon page in case you want to take a look. These are the drivers I chose. They look good, they are very small in diameter and they are designed specifically for DIY speakers. You even get these gaskets in the box as well as a set of screws for mounting. Nice! These are wideband drivers, meaning they are good enough to be used on their own without a dedicated woofer for which I would not have space anyway. Unfortunately, making loudspeakers is a lot more complicated than just putting a driver in a random box. There is some scary math involved and the size and shape of the enclosure have a significant effect on how the speaker sounds. To make things easier, the company making these drivers has several designs on its website. I even tried one of them and I can confirm that they sound very good at close range. But in my case, I have to make a custom box, something as slim as possible that fits perfectly in the width and depth of the bookcase. Speaking of boxes, there's a box I'm sure you're going to love. This is the Curiosity Box, the subscription for thinkers. You get a new box every three months packed with unique toys, brain teasing puzzles and hands-on experiments all thoughtfully curated for people who love science and discoveries. Every curiosity box is one of a kind, containing exclusive gadgets and fun collectibles you will not find anywhere else. This fall, measure distance and time with this 4D tape measure and show off your fashion style with the 7 types of time travel t-shirt. The curiosity box makes a perfect gift for anyone who loves to learn and explore and you can now get a 25% discount on your first month. Sign up with my link below and use the promo code LEFTY25. Thank you Curiosity Box and now back to the project. Using my 4D tape measure, I measured the width and depth of my bookcase. It's about 36.3 cm wide by 26.4 cm deep. And to have enough space for the drivers to fit, my module should be at least 9 cm tall plus the thickness of the top and bottom pieces. Using these numbers and the specs of the driver, I designed a speaker enclosure with a program called WinISD. And when I say driver specs, I do not mean just power and impedance. Speaker drivers have a long list of exotic parameters that describe their behavior. Thanks to applications like WinISD, these can be used to simulate the driver's performance inside of a box, whether it's a sealed or a vented enclosure. I'm going for a vented box, which is basically a box with a tube of a specific size. This tube, also known as a port, gives us a bit of extra bass. Its length and width along with the size of the box determine the frequencies that will be reinforced. So now, thanks to WinISD, I know how big my port needs to be for the internal volume of my enclosure. Notice that each driver is in its own separate space, which means I will need two ports, one for each driver. You can buy pre-made ports and cut them to size if you have to, but I 3D printed mine to get the exact size I needed. Ok, now let's build the box. For the top and bottom sides of the speaker, I simply went to IKEA and picked two matching pieces for the size and color of my bookcase. For the front, I wanted to use a nice piece of solid wood, but I wasn't sure what kind to use, so I asked you over on Instagram and this walnut panel got the most votes. And for the rest of the enclosure, I decided to use 12mm thick plywood, which I had left over from previous projects. The next step was to cut everything to size. I used my mini table saw for this job, but if you don't have one, your hardware store may be able to do this for you. You just have to ask nicely. I cut all widths in one go. This way, even if my measurements are off by a millimeter, it wouldn't matter because all pieces will still have the same width. 
and in case you're wondering, here's how the pieces are going to be laid out. This is the amplifier and Bluetooth receiver module I want to use for my speaker. You may have seen it in some of my previous speaker project videos. It makes enough power for a small speaker, it has volume control and DSP, and it's also very cheap. Again, links are in the description. I want to put it inside the speaker, but I also want it to be removable. That is why I designed this mounting plate with standoffs that hold the module. First, I cut these two pieces of 3mm plywood with my CNC. They have holes in the corners for the standoffs. I also cut an opening of a matching size in the bottom piece. Notice there is a lip around the opening. The removable plate will rest on it. However, I made a mistake when cutting the opening, so I had to reinforce the corners with dowels. This was necessary to give the screws something to bite into. And that is how I made a removable plate for my amplifier module, in case I ever need to change it or adjust its settings. Now I could comfortably start gluing the speaker together. Fortunately, regular wood glue worked great with the IKEA pieces. I am pretty sure it wouldn't work as well with the white variant of the bookshelf, since the white surface is probably plastic, not wood. And I did not forget to drill a hole in the middle piece for the speaker wires. The front piece is going to be made of two layers, one 12mm plywood and the 3mm walnut panel I showed you earlier. The challenge now is to cut the openings for the speakers and the ports. I'm also going to need a way to mount the power button, the volume control, the LED and the DC input connector. If I didn't have a CNC machine, I would have used one of these. It's a set of hole saws that you can use with a drill to cut circular openings in wood. But of course, they cannot beat the precision of a CNC. I cut all the openings with my machine, including the square one, which is where the power button and the volume control are going to go. Next, I glued the walnut panel on top. Using a router and a flush trim bit, I cut the speaker and port openings through the walnut, using the plywood beneath as template. I also chamfered the openings for the drivers to improve airflow. However, I did not cut through the square opening. Instead, I used my CNC to make precise holes for the power button, volume control and power input jack. Then I gave the walnut a bit of light sanding, drilled pilot holes for the screws and glued the front piece in place. Now was a good time to apply a couple of coats of Danish oil to the walnut. Seeing the color of the wood pop is always so satisfying. Later, I took care of the wiring. My USB powered soldering iron came in handy. I added some damping material to reduce sound reflections inside the speaker. Next, I mounted the drivers in place using the screws provided in the set. Finally, I installed the 3D printed ports and the speaker was now ready for a sound check. happy to say that the speaker sounds incredibly good, especially for the budget and the size of the drivers. There is more bass than you would expect out of 2 inch speakers. They cannot get super loud, but for a small room like this one, they are perfectly adequate. Overall, this speaker project turned out great. Once again, I'll have links to parts in the description and build plans over on Patreon. And don't forget to check out the curiosity box and use my promo code for a discount. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.